uh, life on Mars right now. Um, so that's a picture of uh, uh, an astronaut on the International Space Station working in a glove box. Um, we, we're still working on the detailed concepts for what kind of lab equipment we can include, um, but it might look like that. And so the different things that are going on is uh, down here at the bottom, um, some ideas on um, rovers and UAVs and Mars sample return. And with, with low latency telerobotics, um, there are some uh, things that really are, uh, can go a lot quicker, particularly um, things that require um, human loop decision making that um, is, it doesn't require a lot of scientific content. So driving a rover across the surface, drilling a hole, those things take a while right now and don't necessarily need um, a, a lot of uh, discussion. Um, but there'll be a, we expect there's going to be a huge team on Earth of scientists and engineers, just like there is right now, um, making those decisions. But now, in consulting with the crew about, hey, what, where's the next place to go? What's the next thing to take a look at? Um, and then robotic um, Mars sample return up to the lab, as well as those um, uh, scientists, astronauts, field geologists going to both Mars, moons, um, get, getting samples there. Um, so we'll, in that two to three weeks already mission, we'll be able to take a look at those moons, um, get ready for where we're going to put down, um, and then send crew to the surface, maybe in uh, multiple locations. And uh, so here's some early concepts for what that would look like. Um, uh, and uh, it, it is a very lean concept if we're talking about um, going to Mars and the mass that it takes to go out there and going there in 28. Um, we're, we're thinking about what, what we can do. Um, and so here in this, this, the sortie vehicle, you see Orion um, and the cryo stage, but also the excursion system, which includes an airlock and um, this MMU-based spider walker um, for getting down to the surface. Um, so, you know, taking advantage of the capabilities of Orion, um, it is a, it's also, you know, not only is it a great core vehicle um, for long duration space flight, but it is also a great sortie vehicle. Um, and so uh, when, when uh, three of the six crew go out, um, it's, a, it's very similar to the missions we've done um, in orbit around the moon, um, but also the, uh, we leave three crew behind, we leave another sortie vehicle behind in case um, there's a problem and we need that self-rescue. Um, and the, the uh, challenges of working on a low G body, we still got some more study. The concept here is for the Orion and cryo stage to be um, 100 meters or so above the surface of the moon. Um, and at that point, the orbital mechanics are a little bit more like flying in formation with the moon than actually orbiting the moon. Um, send the crew down. Um, and we don't want to fire thrusters at the surface because in this millage environment, um, you can kick a rock and put it into orbit. So we've got to be real careful about that. So use the, use the spider legs to do a little bit of walking, maybe some hopping. Um, and uh, you can see here, uh, you know, crew working, working with the surface. Um, even though the video showed astronauts hopping around on, on Deimos, um, this is probably a little bit more realistic about how that's going to go. So I've talked about Orion's role. Um, you know, and there, there's a lot of capabilities that Orion has to meet its current mission. Um, any time returned from the moon, at any point in the mission, um, and still having a precision landing um, off Catalina Island means that um, the, the reentry capability of Orion is at about 11 kilometers per second. Um, and when you look at the best returns from Mars, um, the relative velocity that you can set up um, between Orion and Earth, Earth's atmosphere is also 11 kilometers per second. So there are missions that Orion can return um, from Mars today. Um, and if we get that up to about 11 and a half kilometers per second, we think that we can, we can have an opportunity um, at, at every point in the Mars return cycle. Um, so high speed precision Earth reentry. Um, and Orion is really multi-purpose, and we've, we've done the assessments to look at, hey, can, can Orion last for 1,000 days? And, and the answer is yes. Um, there's a couple of small things that maybe we want to redesign um, for accessibility. But the, um, you know, 1,000 days isn't actually all that long when it comes to 
spacecraft. Um, we used to work on commercial communication satellites. They're designed for 15 years and they last uh, a lot longer. Mars Odyssey um, uh, has been um, at Mars since 2002, is still operating. Um, and it's not like we use less robust parts or less robust processes for Orion, um, quite the contrary. Um, so it, it's certainly capable of these 1,000 day missions. And then it, it's already designed to operate in deep space um, with those layers of uh, redundancy and systems to, to protect the crew. So, um, you know, Lockheed Martin has been part of every NASA mission to Mars since Viking. Um, and the next Mars lander is in sight. Um, and we've been working um, on the Orion spacecraft now, coming up on our second test flight. Um, so, you know, this, this is not intended to be um, a, a mission that's just Lockheed Martin or, or just NASA. Um, this is an idea for NASA's um, journey to Mars that involves the international community, involves commercial aspects, and, um, and, it, and it, um, as far as who, who can participate. Um, and we're going to involve this architecture as we, as we move forward. Um, you know, everybody's skills is, is needed. Um, and so certainly, I agree with the speakers this morning, it really is an exciting time. Um, uh, you know, and Mars is, it, it is closer than you think, and I, I think we're ready. So thank you. So I think we have time for a few questions. Who's got the mic? Oh, there we go. Can you give us an idea of the estimated cost in today's dollars for this? Uh, the, the total mass of the spacecraft once assembled, including propellant, and whether the habitat at 7.5 meters is the widest object that has to be brought up to LEO for assembly, or what's the widest object that has to fit in the fairing, the rocket we use to bring the components up? Okay, uh, let's see. So um, cost-wise, we're designing this mission to fit within the human exploration budgets um, that we see moving forward. Um, we've made some aggressive assumptions. Um, uh, we're utilizing SLS and Orion as much as we can, um, and we're assuming that the ISS does transfer over to commercial operation in 24. But it's just the concept, and so we haven't gone into the detailed design of, of every module, so um, uh, I don't have a detailed cost estimate. But when we do, when we do those estimates, if, if we think that something's not working, then, then we will adjust. And then uh, your next question was about mass. Um, boy, and I, I, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Um, but a huge percentage of the mass is, uh, is propellant. Um, so when we look at the dry mass, th this is um, significantly smaller than the space station. Um, and it needs to be because it's not a, it needs to, to do those, those maneuvers. And then as far as the volume, um, I think the, yeah, the widest aspect um, of the habitats is uh, you know, the bottom of that biconic, um, which I think is that eight, eight meter, seven and a half meter um, width of the SLS. Um, and, it, and right now, the, the widest element does require the, the 10 meter fairing. That's the crew quarters surrounded by the tanks. Um, and we're looking at that, maybe, you know, hey, can we fit in an 8.4 meter fairing? Next question. Yeah, I was wondering if you looked at uh, a rotating spacecraft or some sort of centrifugal uh, vehicle to mitigate the effects of zero gravity. And if you didn't look at that, why didn't you look at it? Would you think that kind of vehicle is too complicated or too complex? Because Bob Zubrin had that, has that as an essential element of Mars Direct. So I, I was wondering if you'd looked at that. We've looked at it. Um, and, you know, the, the current concept here doesn't include it. Um, there's a lot of research left to go, although Scott Kelly's one-year mission is providing a lot of data. Um, so as far as being a flexible architecture, um, uh, I think that we could, we could consider that. Um, but when we've looked at it, you know, particularly for this first mission um, and looking at the, the advances being made in astronaut exercise and the effect on the body, we, we decided not to put it in this version. Thank you very much. Thank you.